Listening fill in the blanks. Let's start. Most countries' education systems have had what you might call educational disasters, but, sadly, in many areas of certain countries, these disasters are still evident today. The English education system is unique due to the fact that there are still dozens of schools, which are known as private schools, and they perpetuate privilege and social division. Most countries have some private schools for the children of the wealthy. England is able to more than triple the average number globally. England has around 3,000 private schools, and just under half a million children are educated at them whilst some 9 million children are educated at state schools. The overwhelming majority of students at private schools also come from middle-class families. The result of this system is evident and it has much English history embedded within it. The facts seem to speak for themselves. In the private system almost half the students go on to university, whilst in the state system, only about 8% make it to further education. However, statistics such as these can be deceptive due to the fact that middle-class children do better at examinations than working-class ones, and most of them stay on at school after 16. Private schools, therefore, have the advantage over state schools as they are entirely middle class, and this creates an environment of success where students work harder and apply themselves more diligently to their school work. Other possible routes have been offered, though, for Igor Novikov, astrophysicist behind the 1980s theorem known as the self-consistency principle, Time travel is possible within certain boundaries. Novikov argued that any event causing a paradox would have zero probability. It would be possible, however, to affect, rather than, change, historical outcomes if travelers avoided all inconsistencies. Averting the sinking of the Titanic, for example, would revoke any future imperative to stop it from sinking, it would be impossible. Saving selected passengers from the water and replacing them with realistic corpses would not be impossible, however as the historical record would not be altered in any way. Remember the Hindenburg, that's a phrase often heard when hydrogen is discussed. This German passenger airship, kept aloft by hydrogen, crashed in flames as it came into land at Lakehurst, New Jersey, USA in May 1937. 35 people died. Nowadays helium, wickant, Burn is the gas of choice for the lighter than aircraft. Hydrogen is highly flammable, but recent research has indicated that the airship's fabric, not hydrogen, was the culprit in the Hindenburg disaster. Properly handled, there's no reason to think hydrogen is any more dangerous as a fuel than petrol. The explosive liquid now carried safely in the tanks of untold millions of motor vehicles. The recognition of the wealth and diversity of England's coastal archaeology has been one of the most important developments of recent years. Some elements of this enormous resource have long been known. The so-called submerged forests off the coasts of England, sometimes with clear evidence of human activity, had attracted the interest of antiquarians since at least the 18th century but serious and systematic attention has been given to the archaeological potential of the coast only since the early 1980s. Private schools are extortionately expensive, being as much as £18,000 a year at somewhere such as Harrow or Eton, where Princes William and Harry attended and at least £8,000 a year almost everywhere else. There are many parents who are not wealthy or even comfortably off, but are willing to sacrifice a great deal in the cause of their children's schooling. It baffles many people as to why they need to spend such vast amounts when there are perfectly acceptable state schools that don't cost a penny. One father gave his reasoning for sending his son to a private school. If my son gets a 5% better chance of going to university then that may be the difference between success and failure.
a port must be distinguished from a harbor. They are two very different things. Most ports have poor harbors, and many fine harbors see few ships. Harbor is a physical concept, a shelter for ships, port is an economic concept. A center of land-sea exchange, which requires good access to a hinterland even more than a sea-linked foreland. It is landward access, which is productive of goods for export and which demands imports, that is critical. Poor harbors can be improved with breakwaters and dredging if there is a demand for a port. Madras and Colombo are examples of harbors expensively improved by enlarging, dredging and building breakwaters. Educators are often much less aware of how quickly children can lose their ability to use their mother tongue, even in the home context. The extent and rapidity of language loss will vary. According to the concentration of families from a particular linguistic group in the neighborhood, where the mother tongue is used extensively in the community, then language loss among young children will be less. However, where language communities are not concentrated in particular, Neighborhoods, children can lose their ability to communicate in their mother tongue within two, three years of starting school. Seaports have been transformed by the advent of powered vessels, whose size and draft have increased. Many formerly important ports have become economically and physically less accessible as a result. Bypassed by most of their former enriching flow of exchange, they have become cultural and economic backwaters or have acquired the character of museums of the past. Examples of these are Charleston, Salem, Bristol, Plymouth, Surat, Gal, Malacca, Suchow, and a long list of earlier prominent port cities in Southeast Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Bricks are one of the oldest known building materials dating back to 7000 BCE. The oldest found were sun-dried mud bricks in southern Turkey, and these would have been standard in those days. Although sun-dried mud bricks worked reasonably well, especially in moderate climates, fired bricks were found to be more resistant to harsher weather conditions, and so fired bricks are much more reliable for use in permanent buildings. Fired brick are also useful in hotter climates, as they can absorb any heat generated throughout the day, and then release it at night. Like, share, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further updates.